Oh no! Isn't Rumpelstiltskin supposed to be this goblin that creates all kinds of trouble everywhere he goes with evil spells? Yes, it is, Green Bear. Yes, it is, kid. Hi there! Uh, but in this case, this kid's mathematical abilities help fight off the evil spells. Hey, I'm good at math, so you mean I can fight off an evil goblin? This I gotta see. Yes, you do. And this is Multiplying Menace, the revenge of Rumpelstiltskin. All right, you ready? Here we go. The castle was full of guests celebrating Peter's, there he is, his 10th birthday. You have one gift left, said his mother, the queen. A big bouncy puppy ran out and licked Peter's face. <laughs> this is the best birthday ever. Peter said as he ran his fingers over the dog's soft fur. Just then, down the stairs came a thunderous rambling, rumbling boom, 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 and a phew, cloud of smoke. <gasps> Everybody looks stunned. What is this? By the way, check out the giant cake. Three tiers, the big ten on top. Nicely done, mother. Here we go. Peter watched as the smoke cleared, and there stood a strange little man who came to him in a who said to him in a high squeaky voice i have come for you <gasps> go away the queen gasped i said your name 10 years ago and i will say it again rumpelstiltskin you can't get rid of me so easily this time 10 years ago i turned your worthless straw into gold now i demand what you owe me gods the king ordered. Ten guards rushed forward. Rumpelstiltskin pointed his walking stick at them and muttered some words. There was, a, there was a sudden flash and eight guards disappeared. Only their hats remained. By tomorrow you will see that the only way to save your kingdom is to give me the boy. <laughs> and poof, he was gone. <gasps> The celebration continued, but no one was laughing or smiling. Even Peter's puppy Aww. seemed to know something was wrong. <coughs> that night, something strange happened. The baker woke to find hundreds of mice in his flour bins. Ew! The milkmaid found only four cows where there should have been 20. All across the kingdom, far farm animals had disappeared, while insects and other pests had appeared in great numbers. Ew! Ah! News of the strange events made their way to the castle. What should we do? The king asked his advisors. And before they could answer, psh, look who appeared. It's that Rumpelstiltskin guy. He slyly pointed his stick at the castle wall. Stones times one third, he said. The wall was suddenly boop, 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 full of holes. Give me the boy or I will do worse. Leave at once, the king demanded. Rumpelstiltskin pointed at the king. Nose times six, he said. It can't, it can't be, the king spluttered. It couldn't be, it shouldn't be, but it was. The king had six noses. You can count them right there. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh boy, sneezing is going to be a issue. Rumpelstiltskin warned, Everyone here will have six noses if the boy doesn't come with me. Peter said, I'll go with you, but if you fix my father's nose and put everything back the way it was, I will. Rumpelstiltskin replied, No, wait! The queen cried, but boosh! It was too late. Peter and Rumpelstiltskin were gone. <coughs> Peter found himself standing in front of a crooked hut. Will you fix my father's nose now? Ah! The little man replied, I never said I would do it right away. Oh, see, that's the problem with Rumpelstiltskin and these evil goblin types. They, they're they very tricky about these promises that they make. There's always a condition. First, you must work to repay what your family owes me. Oh gosh, who knows how long that's going to take. And whatever this fake debt is. Rumpelstiltskin went into the hut and lit a candle. Peter saw shadowy creatures scurry into the corners. The flame barely cut through the darkness. Rumpelstiltskin pointed his walking stick and the ca at the candle and said, Candle times eight! Poof! 
The glow of eight candles brightened the room. How did you do that? That is no concern of yours. Now, go gather some firewood. Peter collected an armful of dry wood from the surrounding forest. Rumpelstiltskin put four branches in the fireplace. Branches times ten, he said, pointing his walking stick. He made a fire with the forty branches that appeared. Hmm, there seems to be a mathematical thing going on here. In the firelight, Peter spotted two tiny meat pies. His stomach grumbled. Rumpelstiltskin pointed his stick at the pies and said, Pie times five. Ten pies appeared at the table. I really need to learn that trick. I love pies. Well, Rumpelstiltskin gobbled six of the pies as Peter watched. Peter reached for a pie and felt a stick thunk the back of his hand. I'm saving those for later, Rumpelstiltskin said. Now. Sweep the floor and do it quietly. I'm going to sleep. Soon, the sound of <laughs> filled the room. Peter swept the floor, inching closer and closer to the small bed. When he was right next to the bed, Peter gently tried to slide the stick from the sleeping man's grasp, but it wouldn't budge. Peter plucked a feather from Rumpelstiltskin's cap and flickered it under his nose. Well, Rumpelstiltskin let go of the stick to brush the feather away, and Peter grabbed the stick and put the broom in its place. The old switcheroo! Clever idea with the feather, too. Peter looked at the walking stick. How does he use this? Gosh, can I just go back here for a minute? This kid is ingenious. I mean, he, he only had a feather at his disposal. I mean, what else could he use? He used what he had at hand. I want you to think about that when you have a problem. You use what you got. Try to invent a solution. So he's looking at the stick and wondering how he uses it. As if in answer, Peter's stomach blah, 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 growled with hunger. He pointed the stick at the four pies, just like he had seen Rumpelstiltskin do, and whispered, Pies times five! Nothing happened. He tried again, this time mimicking Rumpelstiltskin's squeaky voice. But the four pies just sat there. Then he tried waving the stick like Rumpelstiltskin did. Still, the number of pies did not change. So now, Peter examined the stick carefully. Huh, this X carved into the end might mean something. Oh, that's like the times signal, the multiplication times something. So let's see. He pointed the X at the pies and said, pies times five. Boom, 20 pies appeared. It worked, Peter whispered. He quickly ate eight pies and could not eat any more. If Rumpelstiltskin sees all these pies, he'll know I used a stick. Oh boy, he sure was. Well, let's see, he had 20 pies, he ate eight of them, and he still had 12 pies, but originally he started with four, so. Yep, 12 pies, Peter thought, but there should only be four. Four pies is one-third of twelve. So he pointed the stick. Pies times one-third, he said. Instantly, the twelve pies became four. Yes, Peter exclaimed. Maybe now I can fix my father's nose and all those other awful things that Rumpelstiltskin, Rumpelstiltskin has done. You see what he did there? He, he did a multiplication with a fraction. So it actually made it less. He did it one-third. That's very mathy. Math smarts right there. Okay, moving on. If I can get to the castle and back before Rumpelstiltskin wakes up, he won't even know I was gone, Peter thought. But just in case, he put two chairs in front of Rumpelstiltskin's bed. Chairs times 50, he said, pointing the stick. Oh, look at that. A wall of a hundred chairs blocked the bed. Peter backed out of the hut and ran into the forest. Now the sun was rising as Peter headed for the castle. On the way, he heard a voice calling, Help! Somebody! Please help me! Oh no! Running towards the voice, Peter saw a boy standing on a stone in the middle of the river. Help! Yesterday I was walking across the river when most of the stones disappeared. I've been stuck here all night. Peter knew it was Rumpelstiltskin's work. Why? Because he goes around multiplying and subtracting things that are necessary. So, Peter asked, how many stepping stones were here before? 27!
again. I count them every day as I walk across. Now there are only three stones left. Okay, time to do some math. Peter picked up 27 pebbles and put them down in groups of three. Well, then he pointed the walking stick and said, Stepping stones times nine. Boosh! Nine times three is 27. That's how many there used to be. The boy whooped with joy as he crossed the river. Peter waved goodbye. Bye! Before hurrying on to the castle, there is work to be done. Along the way, well, Peter ran into more of Rumpelstiltskin's mischief. He multiplied by 12 to help a family who had lost all but two of their chickens. He multiplied by 1 30th to help a seamstress whose spools were full of spiders. Oh, see? So he does by, he does by fractions to reduce things and by numbers to multiply and add more things, see? Soon, Peter could see the castle in the distance. He ran faster. As he neared the castle, Let's get it there. There, you see it? Okay, good. As he neared the castle, Peter heard a strange bzzz, 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 sound. Grasshoppers were chewing on every plant in the royal garden. The gardener wailed, oh, as the bugs attacked the tender green leaves. Peter pointed the walking stick at the garden. Grasshoppers times one one hundredth, he said. Oh, thank you. A few more minutes and there would have been nothing left. Oh, see, so he reduced the grasshoppers to just a few. Peter hurried from the garden into the castle. Oh, are you wondering why he didn't get rid of all of them? Well, you always need a few grasshoppers, but you can't have that many. That's out of control. So now he hurries into the castle. Oh, you got away from that horrible man! The queen cried in relief. Peter hugged his parents and explained, I don't have much time. I have to get back before Rumpelstiltskin knows I'm gone. Peter pointed the walking stick at his father and said, No times one six. Oh, thank goodness, the king said, sniffing deeply. My royal nose is restored to its normal number. Now every sneeze won't be such an ordeal. So, you see that? He had six noses. And by, by say, pointing at the stick and saying, uh, multiplied by one six, he only ended up with one of the six noses. See? So it's funny. Multiplication. You think it, it's only to add more, but it can also subtract depending on what you're multiplying. Peter was about to fix the castle walls, remember, with all those holes in it, when he heard a thundering boom and saw a cloud of smoke. Thought you could get away, did you? Rumpelstiltskin scoffed. Peter raised the walking stick. Rumpelstiltskin times none, he shouted. <gasps> Nothing happened. That's not how it works, the little man cackled <laughs> as he grabbed the stick. Oh no, he grabbed the stick. Peter held on to the stick with all his might and shouted, Rumpelstiltskin times nothing. The little man was still there and surprisingly strong. Peter was losing his gris grip. He made one last try. Rumpelstiltskin times zero. A flash of lightning made Peter close his eyes, and we looked again. Rumpelstiltskin was gone. That night, the whole kingdom had celebrated party, party, anti Rumpelstiltskin party. Peter fixed all the bad things Rumpelstiltskin had done. Peter multiplied by whole numbers to bring back the people, the animals, and the objects that had disappeared. And he multiplied by fractions to get rid of all the extra insects and other pests, like those disgusting roaches. When everything was the way it should be, Peter hid the stick where no one would find it. As the story of Peter's bravery spread, children began playing a new game based on his adventure. Times a whole will make you many. Times a fraction leaves hardly any. Times a zero will leave no one. Multiplying menace is on the run. And that was how math saved the day when the revenge of Rumpelstiltskin appeared. Wow, I need to find that stick. But it's hidden now. I want it. I want it. I want to make pies. I want to make uh, uh, stone bridges and castles and did I mention pies? Yeah. Well, good thing I know math. See, kid? 
I told you, math is very valuable. It sure is, and especially if you should happen to run into a certain cursing goblin. Well, kid, see you next time, and I hope you enjoy this special mathematical and magical... Hit it. Kid time! Story time! I want pie now. <laughs>